in this session what we will do is we will understand running profiles with an example and at the same time we will do an end to end web application where you have a web application we will generate a source for web application and then generate the var file see the contents of the var file and we will deploy this var file into a, into a application server say for instance currently I have Tomcat in my system so we will all download Tomcat and then we will upload our war file into Tomcat and see the web application live so from source to making an application live we will try to see the application from end to end in this class that will give you more understanding about what is source and how do we make things live ok so before that yesterday I was explaining you in the, in the previous session I was explaining you the concept of the concept of build profiles profiles can be per project per user or globally so if it is per per project we will set it in the pom.xml if it is per user we will set in the settings.xml in the .m2 folder if it is global then we have a settings.xml in the meva installation we have a conf folder in that configuration conf folder you will have settings.xml so any global changes will happen at settings.xml the best example is your repository urls what is your repository to fetch your artifacts and where do you want to publish artifacts internal team artifacts those repositories will be configured in settings.xml when we actually discuss repositories at that time I will show the change in the global settings user level settings things like where is your Maven installation where is your local internal cache do you want to put in C drive or D drive where is it so all these things can be set in your user level settings and project level settings example which Java version you want to compile ok what are the, the property files to be used in testing environment property files properties to be used in production environment these are the changes which happen for a project from environment to environment so version changes environment changes all those things for a particular project will be maintained in palm.xml so three things project level user level and globally so we have also taken and seen couple of examples yesterday so we will run one this typical example is very useful for you in multiple ways one here using a using a plugin called we have seen compiler plugin we have seen war plugin now this is an antron plugin if you use this antron plugin you can actually run and tasks inside your palm.xml suppose you join a company where there is ant there is a block which is running with ant you don't want to you know it, it may be while it is creating troubles for you in converting it to maven you don't actually need to worry too much about it using antron plugin dependency you can set in the tasks you can set whatever task you want to run so maven also can run ant tasks directly using the plugin antron okay so now what I will do I will configure this plugin I will create a profile called test and in that I will try to run an ant task so whenever I run maven whenever I run maven with this test profile then only this will run similarly you can create another profile with production and you can do you can you can run you can run that with that profile with profile name as prod or production then you will see that using same palm.xml with a different profile name I am able to do different things that's something which I will show to you now so here this is my sample palm you know this very well group id artifact id version the packaging type is jar file so the output of this process is a jar file then this is the name of the app similarly you can see here I have set a profile tag ok where I have defined a profile called a test similarly say I can define a profile called production
So I just defined a profile, a typical profile. We have an ID, then, then we'll have some action to do something, be it checking environment variable, be it, you know, putting your Java compiler plugin here and source as 1.4 you can set, source as 1.5 you can set. So when you run with that profile, that particular Java version is used. That is the, that is the best example for explaining profiles. You, you will have legacy, you will have systems with you need to sometimes support your application on 1.4, on 1.5, on 1.6, on latest 1.7. So you may be required to support your application on multiple Java versions. If you are little familiar with Java, you will know that in 1.5 certain generics are implemented. In 1.0 certain new things are implemented. So you will extend your application, developers will extend the application with new things. But People who are still using 1.4 will not be able to run your version applications. So you need to compile your application with 1.4 and give to the 1.4 users. Okay, if you compile with the, your application with 1.5 and you give it to 1.4 people, they cannot do, there is no, see if I am running 1.5, if you give me 1.4, it will work. But if I am running 1.5, if you give me 1.6, it won't work. because I have installed 1.5 with me, you are giving me an application which is validated from 1.6 onwards. So where is the guarantee that it will run on 1.5? But while on the other hand, if I am using 1.5, if you give me an application built on 1.4, yes, 1.5 is backward compatible to 1.4. So if I am having 1.5 with me, you are giving me 1.4 application, it will work. If I am 1.6, if you give me 1.4 application, it will work. because to a, large, to a large extent backward compatibility is maintained. It means if I am on a higher version, if you give me a lower version, it will work. But if I am on lower version, if you give me a higher version, it won't work. Because you will be implementing lot of new things, common sense. You will be implementing lot of new things in your higher version and unfortunately I am on lower version, so it may not work. That is why we need to ensure, suppose if I have 100 customers, some 20 customers is on 1.4 compatibility, some another 70 are on 1.5 and some 10 are on 1.6. I need to give them artifacts built on correct Java version. Then only it will be working for them. That is why I need to maintain profiles. Now here, now here I have set multiple profiles. One is a, one is a profile test which is actually you know doing something. Yet the goal is not about what it does, but we want to do certain things in palm.xml on a switch and certain things on palm.xml on a different switch. So now what I will do, I will say Maven, so I am doing, I want to run this test and then I will pass my profile as hyphen P stands for profile, and then I will say hyphen P test. So when I say this, what happens, it will continue to run, test is a cumulative phase which will take care of validation, compilation and then test, right, you know, build phases, build phases are cumulative. So now what it does, start scanning for projects, it does compilation, then it runs the test cases and then you can see the echo statement, I have just placed the echo task in my, in my profile. So it has just done the echo. What you see here, this is actually a AND plugin. So what does, what can we do with an AND plugin? We can run AND tasks directly inside a palm.xml. So I have run a hello task. So when I run with profile test, what it does, it does Maven test, like compiling, running test. In addition, if we have specified any action in the profile called test, that action it will perform. Similarly, if I run with prod, now we will start doing things. I have another profile named as prod. So you can see, what is the pro product, what is the profile, I save it. Okay. 
means test cell. Execution phase is test. So I can also mention when I when I want it to be executed. That is called phase. You know this phase well, right? Compile test. So by default, if I don't put any phase, it will take as compile. So if I want certain things to be executed at different phases, I can even mention the phase in my palm.xml. Oh, this is test profile. Okay, let me run production. Now you can see echo in production. This is executed. Suppose I want this profile to be active during compile phase. I will mention here compile. So the phase is compiled. So this will be active. This profile will be active during a compile phase. So if I say now same command after test ideally profile must run. But here only tests are run. No profile is run. You see above you will see that after test cases any profile specific profile is listed that profile will be executed so your profile is not run because i am not the ma the phase is not matching and the other thing if i say maven compile hyphen p production then then you can see that after compilation is done then this phase gets executed you can see now and run plugin is and after compile phase so what so this is called activating profile based on a phase here the profile is executed based on a particular phase and whatever we want whatever plugin we put so so we at, at, at a at a particular phase that plugin also will be executed along with the phase so default the compile is executed here and along with compile whatever actions we mention in this particular PROD profile, that profile will be executed. So, what I will be doing now is I will pick up a web app. Okay, and then I will run this web app. I will run the build for this, generate this, deploy it onto a Tomcat, and see how it works. So, before I go for this, we need to pick up archetype for a web app. So, let me just you know I will say MVN so we have we have we have created archetypes file so let me just check that archetypes file if I have any direct simple web app here you see web app for 1.3 Java 1.3 web app supporting Java 1.4 web app supporting java 1.6 so let me pick this 440 that will be my archetype id so now i will say maven archetype colon generate and you know presenter So it's generating project in interactive mode. So it has given choose a number. It's saying 251. Let me give 440 as my number version 1.5 okay any any number it's asking me to choose 8 let me choose 8 so it's downloading you know couple of things it's asking for a group id let me say org dot maven training that's my, uh, my that's my group id artifact let me name it as my web app any name i can give This group ID will be typically based on your company. Suppose if you are in Cisco, com.cisco. Based on whatever company it will be commercial. If you are, it will be com, then it will be dot followed by name of the company, general package convention. Then you will have name of application and so on. 
enter snapshot okay package yeah let me retain this package it's asking me to confirm group id artifact id version yeah so it created me a folder structure for my web app so my web app here i have source pom.xml in source i have java files then i have some web app here i have some index.jsp you know typical web application right you will have I, if you remember i have just discussed this couple of sessions ago if you pick up a typical web application it will have three types one is the database level where you have just imagine a mobile application for your understanding so you will have a mobile app where you have the user where you have mobiles listed that's view for you and then when you require when you click on mobile it will go and fetch the details about that mobile specification and all that so how does this work so you have a database where all the information about mobile is product product id then product description cost shipping approach everything is stored in the database then you have a user ui designed which can list all the values all the mobiles in a grid model or a tabular model then you have a engine in the middle which will actually take the request from the browser go to database fetch the result and again convert into html and give it to browser in a java world if you look at it these pages are designed in jsp and your backend processing is done with servlets and your database is typical sql server or mysql or oracle so servlet is intermediate where it takes request go to database get the result parse it give it again back as html format so you'll have jsps html as front end then servlets will be your middleware processing the request to and from the browser between browser and database and you have a database layer where you actually store information about all the mobiles and their details so this is typical application web app so we have got this application now if you go to java then you will have this is this direct simple jsp page no processing so there won't be java code but structure re is retained and if you see the pom.xml here we are familiar with pom.xml group id artifact id version here the packaging model is war any web application generally will be war file if application has is ejb type if the application is ejb type then we will have a bean a bean model then we will have here but by default if it's a web application you can assume that the artifact is a war file so you can see that there are a couple of plugins here maven compiler plugin the interesting thing that you want to note it is the configuration here i have chosen source and target as 1.6 because the web application i have chosen is on java 1.6 it will be here then here if, if here then here then you have maven war plugin which is, which is used for building war file so couple of interesting things here in the dependency.xml so what i will do now is that you know i will just go ahead and say a maven package This is because I have not moved to the directory where my application source and pom.xml are located. I am just giving me a package. I will download a couple of things required for generating a Java based web application supported on 1.6 layer. and once it download you know where it will host where it will put them it will putting them in my users dot m2 dot m2 local internal repository which works as cache for me so it's downloading while it's downloading meanwhile because we will deploy it onto tomcat if you do not have tomcat in your system just go ahead and download tomcat so how do you download tomcat 
if you see here apache tomcat just click on it i think it would be around 6 or 7 mb it, it happens in less than 30 seconds so you, what will you download here we just download tomcat 7 let's go with the latest version always so what will you download you download the exe binary distribution okay the binary distribution you go ahead and install 32 bit or 64 bit windows service installer so it will be an installer which sets everything for you go ahead and download this installer so once you install during the installation phase it will ask you for some ports http port and all that if you have other applications running on 8080 you may be typically required to give a different port number 8090 or something so that tomcat will be running on a different port other than 8080 because ias also chooses 8080 as default port Hudson, all these people chooses 8080 as the default port so sometimes if you will get a port conflict then you give a different port and proceed so just go ahead and install the apache tomcat meanwhile here you can see that the the package is done the compilation is complete tests are run then here you can see that the var file is getting built and var file is generated so if i go to my my web app i have a target folder in that i have my my web app dot war has been generated now what I need to do is I need to deploy this into my Tomcat. Meanwhile, I will recommend you strongly to install Tomcat in your systems. So while installing Tomcat, if some of you get a problem, that problem would be most likely because 8080 port would be consumed by someone else like Hudson or IIS in some cases. So in that case, you will not be able to run your Apache. In that what you need to do is go to Tomcat, go to your Tomcat installation folder. There you will have a conf folder. In that there you will have a file called server.xml. In that server.xml you will have a node called connector where protocol is HTTP. In that you will have a port number 8080 just you change it to a different port 809095 give any number here between 0 to 16000 you can choose a number ideally give it in the series of 8000 and 9000 where most people will have firewalls open for those ports most application most firewall policies so choose in those lines change the value here just start your tomcat service go to services dot msc services dot msc type in your run if you open services that's nothing but services dot msc then you will see the list of services you will find that apache tomcat is also a service which is started just restart this service So you have restarted this service. Now go to your browser. HTTP localhost instead of 8080 you give whatever port you have chosen. Then it will automatically open the Apache, Apache default console for you. If you, if you want to upload any artifacts any war files are like that into tomcat then you need to open your tomcat manager to open your tomcat manager you should have a manager role okay so you need to put that information in the in a file called tomcat users.xml in a file called tomcat users.xml it will also be in the configuration folder Below the server.xml, you will have tomcat users.xml. 
so here you need to tell there will be lot of examples here actually if you want to use manager ui you have to say like this user you can give any username you can give any password and you can give the role here only if you give that role of manager gui so it will open the manager interface for you from manager interface administration screen you can actually upload your war files so you need to add this role in your tomcat users.xml so you can do it like the way i have done see if you don't want to do like this also if you click on tomcat manager okay i'll just log out may log out Let's close the console open again good so http So it will ask me for username and password. Just imagine if I have not given anything. So it will say unauthorized. And clearly it will tell. Please examine the file conf slash tomcatusers.xml. If you want to add manager GUI role to a username tomcat with a password blah blah blah. Add this. So clearly it is giving you an indication. That you need to add this role, add this user to your tomcat users.xml so directly you can copy this and paste in your conf slash tomcat users.xml so you need not type seeing the screen you can directly copy it from there and place it in your tomcat users you can define role once and you can define any number of users Just apply that and, and ping me if you are able to log into log into the Tomcat manager. You will be seeing something like this. Some of you are getting the problem that when you are trying to save this Tomcat users.xml with the change with the change here it is giving unable to save the file if it is giving that then you will have then you have two reasons one you stop the service stop stop the tomcat service how do you stop that go to services.msc and then you stop it here later you can restart it Okay, so stop it and save it. Most cases it will be saved. If not, the second reason would be if you are using any Windows Server or Windows 7 later version of Windows, then you may have the permission issues. So go to the folder of Apache installation. Go to properties. Go to security. And here you choose administrator or user and ensure that edit it and you give all permissions here for user all permissions for administrator all the permissions just ensure that we have all the permissions to write to this folder that's why you are not able to save it so either you have security issue with your folder or with this service two issues at least 99 percent cases after you give permissions to the Tomcat folder or after restarting services, you will be allowed to log in. So once you see this web application, web application manager here, web application manager screen, 
then in that you will have a section called deploy in that deploy you will have you can choose the war file that you want to deploy so choose your war file in our case it is my web app 1.0 snapshot.war open it and then you say deploy if you click on deploy then you will see that you will see that that snapshot in the list of applications directly you can open it in new tab so you will see that it's a jsp page and you will see the hello world written here so what we have done successfully now is that you have some source code okay we have some source code See, we have some source code with some JSP pages and Java code. Okay, it is somewhere anywhere. There is a Maven installed there. With the Maven, we have built this source code. We got this WAR file. Even I can send this WAR file to you now in mail. You can put this WAR file in your Tomcat. Now you see the application live. So that is how you know from a source to hosting and hosting a web application. This is the entire cycle. Build it. You have the source code. We generated the structure with Maven archetype. Then we build it. We generated WAR file. Then we then we have a Tomcat installation in our deployment servers. We copy this WAR file to the deployment server and we open Tomcat there. We deploy it from the manager console. You have the application running on your dev deployment server. You can have the application running on the UAT server. Probably next session. We will try to deploy with Maven itself. That's something which will be even interesting. Once you have Tomcat running, what we can do is, how can we update our pom.xml so that it will automatically deploy into my Tomcat. I don't need to log into Tomcat. Okay, I don't need to click on deploy. I don't need to upload my WAR file. I don't need to do all these things. In, in Maven only, I have a plugin for deployment. I use this deploy, let the artifact go there and get deployed into the Tomcat installation. So how to do this automatically that we will pick it up in the next session.